everybody to the 6th Annual Assyria Day Conference 2016. I'm excited to see such a great turnout today. Thank you for your attendance. My name is Vivian Joseph and I'll be your host today. The Assyria Day Conference is proudly brought to you by the Young Assyrians and the Assyrian Universal Alliance Australia. It has never been a more important time for the Assyrian community to remain strong in a, as a single nation. As you are all very aware, the Syrians in Iraq and Syria remain persecuted and continue to be subjected to extreme violations of basic human rights. Many Assyrian families remain displaced, their property confiscated and looted. The objective of today's conference is to advocate the following the rights of the Assyrian people to safely return to their homeland, the rights to exist in harmony, peace, security for all Assyrians to continue their Christian faith and traditions, and most of all, a homeland for the Assyrian people. Before we begin, I would like everybody to stand for a, for a minute of silence to show solidarity for Assyrian martyrs of past and present. custodians of this land, of elders past and present on which this event takes place. I'd like to formally welcome our guests of honour, Mr. Hermes Shahin, the uh, Deputy Secretary General of the Assyrian Universal Alliance, Mr. David David, President of the Assyrian Australian National Federation, Mr. Ninos Aaron, Chairperson of the Young Assyrians, Mr. Simon Isavian, AUA Executive Board Member, Mr. Guy Zangari, Member for Fairfield, Dr. Hugh McDermott, Member for Prospect, Ms. Susie David, Advisor to the Secretary General of the AUA. Um, there are some apologies. Some of our friends could not join us today, but they send their well wishes for Assyria Day. Uh, the Honourable Reverend Fred Nile, MLC, Mr. Frank Carboni, Mayor of Fairfield City, Ms. Tanya Davies, MP, Member for Mulgoa. And I would also like to formally welcome our guest speakers for today, Dr. Hugh McDermott, Member for Prospect and Deputy Chair of the Assyrian Parliamentary Friendship Group, welcome, and Dr. Nicholas L. Gilu. Thank you for accepting our invitation to a Syria Day conference and we look forward to your presentations. I'd also like to acknowledge our guests from various Assyrian and uh, community organisations. These are in no particular order. The Assyrian Australian National Federation, the Assyrian Australian Association, the Assyrian Charity and Education North Community, New South Wales Babylon Cultural Association, the Assyrian Australian Academic Society, the Assyrian General Conference, the Assyrian Harbour Social Association. Thank you and welcome to you all. I'd now like to welcome the Deputy Secretary General of the AUA to open the conference. He joined the Assyrian Universal Alliance in 1983 and in 1994 he was elected to the position of Chairman of the Australian branch. He has been a driving force in having the Assyrian genocide recognised in the Federal and the New South Wales State Parliaments. He has dedicated his entire life to the establishment of an Assyrian homeland. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Hermes Chain. Thank you, Vivian. Welcome, Mubbe. I will be here to talk to you about the first time of the day of Berikha, the day of the Asur. I will be here to talk to you about the first time of the day of the day. يوم مهنيانا وبتشبخ وقطفخ طنيات من خشيات الخرزان بدها يوم يوم تعثر أو بريخة أو كل لقاء. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to welcome you 
this afternoon to this sixth annual Assyria Day Conference. First of all, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the young Assyrians for organizing this conference, particularly the chairman, Mr. Ninos Aron, for their great efforts in making all the preparation for this memorable day. I would also like to exp express my sincere thanks and appreciation to our keynote speakers. It's a pleasure to have you speaking at our youth conference. Thank you for your time, for sharing your knowledge and your experience with us. I wish you all the greatest success. It's not always easy to put together such a high power team for a conference. My congratulations again to the young Assyrians for a well thought and well designed conference, which clearly shows your determination to deal with the issues on your agenda in a very pragmatic and constructive manner. I would like also to express special appreciation to the Club Marconi staff for hosting this conference and for all the help provided, particularly to Mr. Vince Futi, President, and Tony Zappia, CEO of this esteemed club. Ladies and gentlemen, youth are the future leaders of any society in the world. Youth has to actively participate in development of any society. What makes us proud is that this National Day has been organized successfully by our Assyrian youth for the last six years. I strongly believe that the future of the Assyrian nation depends on them and lies in their capable hands. The next stage of our history needs this youth in order to reshape our future to become a brighter one. To serve their people and this wonderful country of Australia that has given us freedom and equal opportunity without discrimination regardless of who we are and where we have come from. This conference is taking place at a time when the entire Middle East is facing enormous challenges. A lot of painful tragedies have occurred during the past years that have inflamed our nation's wounds. Currently, half of the Assyrian population is internally displaced, living in a very harsh environment after being forced out by Islamic terrorist groups operating in Iraq and Syria. Much of the Assyrian homeland in the city of Mosul and Nineveh Plain in Iraq and Habu region in Syria are still under ISIL control. The attacks on the Assyrians and other minorities set a new and horrifying precedent for viciousness and brutality with crucifixion, the beheading of children, and selling of captured women and children as sexual slaves. The Assyrian people have sought international recognition of their legitimate rights through many political organizations in and outside of the Middle East. The IUA have sparked a national revival as the first internationally recognized organization, a global alliance comprised of various sectors of Assyrian national organizations and federations throughout the world. The AUA upholds that Assyrians are indigenous people of the fertile crescent and therefore have the right of self-determination in their own lands. Yearning for the land of Assyria has never left the hearts of its people in their minds. Assyria is the place of fulfillment. Return to Assyria, which is the theme of today's conference, is aimed at sending a message about the rights of the Assyrians to return to their homeland, to affirm their rights to exist and to achieve peace and security in our ancestor land occupied Assyria. Let's empower our youth to determine their own destiny. We thank you all for your attendance and wish you an enjoyable and successful conference. Thank you.
like to call upon our next speaker. I'd like to introduce the Vice Chairperson of the Young Assyrians to address the conference. Please welcome to the stage, Naram Santamus. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the sixth annual Assyria Day. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all our friends and guests who are here today. Assyria Day was established as a symbol of our National Revival Day. We dream of the day where we can return back to Assyria, an Assyria that is governed and protected by Assyrians for Assyrians. But this will forever remain a dream if we don't fight to get it back. The Assyrian region is crucial for the survival of the Assyrians of Iraq and will allow for a greater local Assyrian control within the context of an integrated Iraqi state. Such a region will allow for increased peace, stability and balance throughout the whole region. Our Assyrian nation goes back over 7,000 years. And in those 7,000 years, we have given to the world like no other nation. It is well known that we invented the world's first written language, law, which is well known as Hammurabi's code of law, the will, astronomy, the postal system, the library, and advancements in medicine, science, mathematics, and military strategy. All of what we have done for humanity, and yet we find ourselves in this most miserable situation today. The Western governments have betrayed us in the past, and today are turning a blind eye to the Assyrian genocide, as well as our right to self-governance. Our ancient cultural and religious sites blown to pieces, and all we hear is condemnation in front of the television, like the perpetrators are afraid of speeches and letters. How would Western governments act if Western countries' icons were destroyed? Imagine if the Colosseum in Rome was destroyed, there would be an uproar. Now I ask you this, are you happy to hand over the Assyrian cause to your children in its current state, where our nation is being pillaged and occupied, land stolen and houses looted? <coughs> where we are confusing our children with different national names, all lumped up in a failed triname that is causing more harm and division than unity, where separatist movements have risen up to work against and harm the Assyrian cause that we have been working towards for over a century. While we are going through this identity struggle, our holy land is being taken away from us at an alarming rate. We recently witnessed illegal activity by the KRG taking Assyrian lands and then not allowing the Assyrians to protest the land grabbing. We need to look at the bigger picture, Assyrians. It is time for us to work together and become the force we once were to free our occupied lands. Time for us to let go of our past issues that have hurt us so much and take back what is ours for generations to come. I want to leave you with this short poem by Malfono Naam Fayyad titled, Awake, Son of Assyria, Awake. Awake, son of Assyria, awake and see the world how enlightened. The chance is fleeing from us and time is running out. Awaken, son of Assyria, awake. In vengeance you will take refuge. Rise up and band together to strengthen. And if one does not awake, we have lost our chance. Without a purpose, misfortune will befall our land. Happy Assyria Day. Tell you, Sagi. Chaya Atul. Zangari, member for Fairfield, to say a few words. Mr. Zangari has been publicly, politically active with the Labour Party since 1993, with qualifications including a Bachelor of Education from the Australian Catholic University. Currently, Mr. Zangari serves as Shadow Minister for Corrections, Shadow Minister for Emergency Services, and Shadow Minister for Justice and Police. Mr. Zangari is also actively involved in the community and has been a supporter of the Assyrian community. He has been committed to helping those seeking refuge from persecution in Iraq. Please welcome to the stage Mr. Guy Zangari, member for Fed. Thank you very much, uh, Vivian. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I say a few words, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and, of course, pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. To all committee members who are here, to the Assyrian Universal Alliance, Hermes, lovely to see you, to the Assyrian National Federation, to David David, and of course to Ninos Aaron and the young Assyrians and the wonderful committee, congratulations to you all. This is an important day for us. 
and as such, I would like to acknowledge and say a big thank you to the people that have made this happen. Um, I also look forward to listening to Dr Nicholas and of course Dr Hugh McDermott, my parliamentary colleagues, uh, my parliamentary colleague rather, because they have some uh, wonderful information to impart on us today. So my address is going to be very, very brief. But one of the things that I must say, and as Vivian has said, um, that in my six years as being the State Member for Fairfield, I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with the Assyrian community, both the elderly in our community, but also the young. And Assyria Day is so important for the youth of Assyrian background, of course, to promote the culture, to promote the language, and of course, to raise awareness of the plight of Assyrians who are fleeing, of course, the homeland. Um, I, along with my parliamentary colleagues and Dr Hugh McDermott, would like to see the day when you can return to your homeland. That is, of course, of utmost importance. However, under the current circumstances of what is happening in the Middle East, that is unlikely. But we must ensure that those who have the power to do so assist the Assyrian people. Because it is thousands, 7,000 years of history of culture, of art, of food, of language that will suffer and is currently suffering. So we all must join the fight together but ensure that your children and my children understand what is at stake. An entire civilization is at stake. So I thank you all for your kind invitation and I look forward to hearing both doctors impart on us the wonderful knowledge that they have in order that we too all can work together to see that day where we can tread on the land of Assyria together as brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Zingari. I'd now like to call on Mr David David, President of the Assyrian Australian National Federation, who will also like to say a few words in Assyrian. Thank you, Vivian. Shlama Turaya Miliam Kaboy Kara, Benoni Benatid Umta Freta, Erhan Mugabe, Gary Zangari, Hugh McDermott, Nicholas, Dr. Nicholas Caesar, Harada Mikra Homish Shaheen, Club Madras at Queer Tura Troya, Khatan Suzy, David, advisor at Queer Tura Troya, Mandabrani, Mishdalan, Ukayumi, at Kuli Shudasan, or Yaban, Ariza Mutanaya. شلام ملیم خوب و یقار قبلون بدای و متعاطر بیای خیم خبرانه امرن گیب برای اوت و تنیت اطرای استرالیا یو متعاطر بای نشی مدن نخون تیل ایتوتا بشیت تری الپ و اسرا یو متوجه کلی شوپا کنگرس خویاده یو اربل انکارا بای مدن نخون قطعه تخمین تیوتی تمن استرالیا آه خیال و اطلاعش نبیه و خاله من متوجه سویدن و قطعا متوجه کلی شوپا تریپو تریپو تمنی یو سویدنیوا تریپو قطعا یو سیدنی استرالیا تریپو و قصرا یو گربیت آتر دوها تنگی قیم کدی خوبیش خوب اختاره و متوجه تاما تخمین تو متانا میشه قبیله ایو متعاطو زیخخ و خامخ و هایی من خنیشه خت تخمین تا اضراب اموات تمنن جربنا و تخمیننا و دیرنا و آتر. یاد من قرار من نخوان بر زایت زحمت دیلا و مارت دختر آهیوما. این گرفت او یخیامن یو تخمینیات زرخری یو لب علیم علیمات جوان تو خمات. اد آنی ماسی قاری یلبی قورخ هیوی یورت بیه قد بیمار و خیوم آتور یان دیارت آتور. و آن هم منه من و اد لان آهی منو تا قد آهی من بد آتر ایتود. پس اب آهام امتلاه. پیش از جنگل تام خیت و دوت و جنگل تو و جست و پول تام نت دو هات. این پل خخم نو داده و غیر رخ او داده. او یان و بناتن جوان کن خماتن. آتی خمیتن غیر ری همینون ایتن برسد. برزایتون چه قربایی تا اتلاع منش حرم من لخ جو استرالیا لا افتی ال سید لبری نو اول تبرد لبر ادیو کریس هیس لمسیل هم منن کریس باون لمسیل هم منن. السبب اللي يبلي يبي إلكشن تملي تولن رابخينه قيوم قد هيو لخا بريد نايل اللي في تسمانيا 
وفاون قد لبيو على واقع كل بدو قد بالخطا وقسنا بينما إنه خنتنا رابا خروبات ورابا هيراني كل باراخيات بشدرنا أكثر بين أمر قد هاي لقن هيوي وتخنيت هم مشا قد أها أنت دخلي وجبارتا وتلاتشيت الشوائل بشدنا جارت فلخ خاي خيتا اتهاويلا خبيت السورة اتعنا هما شكلو راديو ايمان هم زمن يمرن دات يوما بالفلخة خليك اتم بالخانة ات يوما بان خننوي سرطة يعني ننوي خطة يقول ننوي انا تلتا سب ننوي الى يقول بان ايد ايو فيطخت اطعطو وانا همون ايوان ان هاويلا شوف الاقلا وخبيك تيرويلا ونطريلا وخاميلا آه أن تطريت خايخة بدر الجبروت وبخنية خمية شمو وإقاره وليشانه ويتوته ومردوته وأنا همون من أيوة ما آت أن تطريت بتمر مخل العرض أو هاتا وكل بزيخة يوم تأطر طعمه أو بريخة يوم تأطر الكل خن هو يوقن هو يجرتا أخن بلخة ومريا عليها منا أطر بالقيامة خي جانو خن خي I would now like to introduce our first speaker. He is currently a lecturer at the University of Melbourne, specialising in Syriac studies. In 2013, he completed his doctoral dissertation at the University of Sydney, focusing on socio-cultural history and heritage of ethnic Assyrians in Iran. <coughs> he has an MA in World Religions, Eastern Christianity from Leiden University and a BA in Semitic languages from the University of Sydney. He will be speaking today on the Assyrian resilience, resistance and survival, the last 100 years. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Nicholas Algilu. Thank you, Nadia. Akhwati khatwati binomti khabiwe. إقارك وراب الجورة هذه قد هوا اللخ أموه ونقول دها خرزة بتيوم الآثر أخفقد لم يقرأ دائما بخيلة على شيتة أتياب زي خخلة يؤثر جانا دون نوي يؤثر أحنون أحوث أنا ابن وابن الثديوم ثيدا هي وثوريته تودي ساقي تحضي روته هكى وكطالبنا الخو يوم الآثر شافيره باسيمه وبريخه عليه وعلى كلنا before I start, I would like to just express some thoughts that I just typed out on my phone. You know, when people sit and they play with their phones, you know, they're not always playing. Now, sometimes they write notes. <laughs> and I was writing some notes because today for me is a very emotional day. Now, I live in Melbourne now, but I was raised here in Fairfield. I'm a Fairfield boy from Sydney. I lived 26 years of my life here. And being born in Australia, you know, you have these burning questions when you go to school because of multiculturalism and because of Harmony Day and all of these things. We were sort of pushed to tell people where we came from. And, you know, what do I tell people? Where do I come from? Do I come from Assyria, if there's no state called Assyria? Do I come from Iraq? when I have cousins that are from Syria, and my grandfather was born in Turkey. Where is Assyria? And these were questions people would ask. People would ask, oh, so you're Syrian? No, I'm not Syrian. <laughs> it's a completely different thing. And then you have to start uh, telling them this whole history that you've memorized in your head. Um, it affects you when you grow up and your classmates say, I'm going on a holiday to my parents' village in Greece, or to visit my grandfather's relatives in Italy. Or, you know, Italy has a very strong, well, we're in Marconi Club, it has a very strong team in the World Cup, or you, you have people that are, you know, proud of, oh, well, not in the World Cup. Well, you World Cup. Today, yeah, today, no. No, not today. But it used to, back when I was in high school. Or, you know, certain countries have, teams in, in the Olympic Games. And as a stateless nation or as a stateless ethnic group, you don't have that recognition. It's very hard. And it eats at your self-confidence. Now, 
Assyria Day is something new that was brought about by the Assyrian Universal Alliance and over the years I've come to appreciate its importance because we really need to wake up as a people. For me, the meaning of Assyria Day is not necessarily to have an Assyria on the ground yet. Because unless Assyria becomes a reality in our own minds and in our own hearts, unless we actually think Assyrian and be Assyrian in everything we do and act like Assyrians, then Assyria will never happen on the ground. There are five things we need. We need love. We need to love ourselves and love each other. We need respect. We need to respect ourselves and respect each other. We need to have knowledge and wisdom, to know ourselves and to know each other. Confidence, to be confident in ourselves and each other and trust so we can trust ourselves in one another. These five things are lacking in our people and we need to work on that. We need to be self-reliant. We need to rely on ourselves because we've missed too many opportunities by not being proactive and waiting for others to do things that we should be doing for ourselves. And we need to be successful both as a diaspora community and in the homeland. I believe in one very important saying by Mahatma Gandhi who said, when the people lead, the leaders will follow. A lot of Assyrians wait for their leaders to do things. They say, you know, when the patriarchs unite, then our nation will be united. No, we, un we need to unite ourselves. We move the patriarchs. They shouldn't move us. We need to think for ourselves and not be sheep for other people. Before I begin my speech, I'd also like to remind you that the census is coming. I don't know if anybody's talked about the census. It's going to be on the 9th of August. Okay, please <coughs> remember to write that your ethnicity or your background is Assyrian, even though there is no state called Assyria. Don't write Iraqi or Assyrian, write Assyrian. And for your language, write Assyrian. Yeah. It's very important because unfortunately since 2011, and this is something that affects us as a nation, the Australian government has recognized us as two nations, as Assyrians and as Chaldeans. We need to show that we are stronger and we need to be forceful about who we are and what our identity is. Because if we are not, no one will do that for us. So, first and foremost, I would like to thank the Young Assyrians and the Assyrian Universal Alliance for inviting me to be with you today. It gives me great pleasure to be with all of you on such a momentous and historic day at an event which embodies all three words in my title for today's talk. The fact that we are here celebrating Assyria Day in Fairfield, thousands of kilometers away from our homeland, symbolizes our ultimate resilience in the face of all adversity, our stubborn resistance to all these factors which would ultimately lead to our assimilation and extinction, as well as the way in which we have managed to survive as a distinct ethnicity for the past 2,600 years since the fall of the Assyrian Empire, and especially since the Assyrian genocide a century ago. Yes, we have suffered and have been victims of countless untold atrocities, yet above all, we are survivors and we need to recognize our strengths rather than dwell on our weaknesses. Firstly, I'm going to, I just said that, you know, we don't have a state. But without having a state or without having an empire, without having an administrative unit, Assyria survived as a geographical reality after the fall of the empire. And there's evidence for that. Now, Many scholars and anti-Assyrian separatists <coughs> deny the continuity of the Assyrian identity after the fall of their empire in the period of 612 to 605 BC. Actually, there is plenty of cartographic or map evidence on the contrary, proving that there was a geographical area still identified as Assyria by geographers and cartographers the world over 
and incorporated as provinces in the empires that subsequently ruled over it. The rule of the Median Empire and the Neo-Babylonian or Chaldean Empire, which was about 55 to 66 years, who divided the Assyrian heartland between themselves, was not long enough to destroy the Assyrian identity. It was only two generations. And as you can see here, there was still an area within those empires called Assyria. Under the Persian Achaemenid Empire, which lasted 220 years, Assyria was resurrected as an imperial satrapy or province called Arthura, Atur. And a couple of times the Assyrians actually rebelled against the Achaemenid Empire because they wanted to become independent again. This was continued under the Macedonian or Greek Empire of Alexander the Great, which ruled it for about seven years, and its successor. So you can see Assyria right there as a separate province. And its successor, the Seleucid Empire, which ruled for about 171 years and was often seen as the successor of the Assyrian Empire. In a lot of Jewish sources from the time, they call the Seleucids the Assyrians. And this is the time actually when the names Assyria and Syria started to become synonymous with each other in Greek. Under the Parthian Empire, which lasted about 365 years, the Assyrians developed Aramaic-speaking vassal kingdoms around the cities of Arbil, which is close to the ancient Assyrian capital of Nineveh, Hatra, which is close to the ancient Assyrian capital, the first Assyrian capital of Ashur, and Edessa, or Urhai, Urhoi, which is very close to the last Assyrian capital city of Haran. And they were eventually, so they acted as buffers on the frontier between the Roman Empire and the Parthian Empire or the Persian Empire and they were eventually absorbed by both. But they maintained a distinct identity. Many of you may know Hatra from the videos of ISIS destroying the site last year. I've heard many people that don't know that it's an Assyrian site actually, but it's a very important Assyrian site. Now. Both Assyria, ah, so this is another map where you can see the kingdom of Arbil or Adiabin, the kingdom of Edessa or Osroen, and the kingdom of Araba or Ma'arwa, the west, and Hatra in that area between the Parthian and the Roman empires. Both Assyria and Mesopotamia were incorporated as provinces of the Roman Empire under the Emperor Trajan for two years. And then under the Sasanian Empire for about 413 years, the name Asuristan or Asuristan was given to the Mesopotamian province around the imperial capital of Ctesiphon or Salmanpak, which is to the south of Baghdad. So here you can see obviously Asuristan. And again, Asuristan the land of the Assyrians. Furthermore, Assyria appears in the contemporary geographies, histories, and world maps of Hecateus of Miletus. Okay, I've put a red box around it so you can see it. It says Assyria. Herodotus, 